Pat Murphy is the executive director of Community Solutions and the author of the forthcoming book, Plan C, Community Survival Strategies for Peak Oil and Climate Change. Pat Murphy co-wrote and co-produced the award-winning documentary film, The Power of the Community, How Cuba Survived Peak Oil. He lectures widely on energy, peak oil, geopolitics, and lifestyle solutions. He was a founder of a software company that developed a design for manufacturing program for residential buildings, which greatly reduced waste uh, in construction. He also designed and built active solar homes. He has had a long career in computer applications and transportation and en energy industries. So please welcome Pat Murphy. Well, it's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. I have this problem, of course, uh, if you want to give your original presentation, you have to give it first, because after you heard everyone else, you redesigned it so many times that it's only a shadow of what it was before. What I want to uh, point out, uh, one thing that's, I think, very important, although this is a concept on sustainability, um, I argue that the word, we really need a new watchword. The sustainability was defined in 1987 by the United Nations Brundtland Commission, and there was a point in time in which we were still interested in development. And so sustainability was associated with development, which is a continued increase in population, consumption, and building out of the infrastructure. But I think that what we learned yesterday, um, and when we will continue to understand more about climate change, peak oil, as Richard Heinberg said, we'll probably be in a Great Depression uh, sometime next year. That's, a, that's of course, a guess, but I think we all are aware of the weaknesses of the financial system. And the reason I want to talk about survivability is because I think we have to get a lot more serious about what we're doing. And in particular, the areas that we're concerned with is how can we reduce our consumption? We have to take uh, much greater steps. Well, we're faced with these three problems. The, um, shrinking amounts of fossil fuel, peak everything, as Richard pointed out, increasing CO2 was really threatening all life on the earth, and also record inequity, which I'm going to address a little bit. And, and by the way, the thing that has impressed me most about this conference is that very early on, people started talking about morals and ethics and religion and how we're going to live. Because I don't think we can survive if we just treat this as some sort of engineering problem or, or some uh, complex issue about the money supply, we're going to have to look at actually what's happening to our hearts and souls as we live in this very, very destructive environment. Well, you've seen these um, in the upper left-hand corner, the familiar ASPO chart, which turns out to uh, probably represent a very accurate representation of what's going to happen in oil. Also from ASPO in the upper right, peak natural gas, our other major fuel. In the lower left column, the same chart that Richard Heinberg showed, is when you add natural gas and coal and oil together, we're going to have a peak in all these fossil fuels and a decline. And then the, the lower right, we see the price of uranium. People have, haven't talked too much about that, but all this idea of, of nuclear power is the solution and should we do it or not do it is really ignoring the fact that that fuel also has its limits. The other side of the fossil fuel problem is the climate change problem. Uh, we have peak climate. I just have, don't have a chart on this. We also have to talk talking about peak soil. And someone has written a, a paper on that recently. It was on Energy Bulletin. Uh, we are depleting our soil as well. And in terms of the agriculture and the food crisis that was starting to appear in the world, it's not only a combination of uh, ill-thought-out schemes such as biofuels, but also a continued depletion of the soil. Uh, James Hansen, who's the head of NOAA, the National or uh, Oceanographic and At Atmospheric Administration, pointed out a few months ago that we, we really can't go above 350 parts per million in terms of CO2, but we're already at 387. Last year, we were talking about 450. We can be safe within 450. But the message is Hansen's bringing is, is already gone over the limit. We're already 
past some sort of a tipping point. Now this is not to tell you, well, hell, it's all over, no sense making any changes, but to emphasize we have to make them much, much faster, that the, the need to curtail, to cut back and make changes is becoming much more serious. Now, this is the chart that I normally uh, toss up and then get by as quickly as possible, particularly if I'm talking to businessmen. And this is the, uh, uh, th this upper chart is from uh, Jeffrey Sachs' book, who was the economist who helped uh, Russia when they went through the collapse. I don't know if you know, about 10 million people died early deaths in Russia as they went from their system to a full uh, capitalistic system. And he shows what has been the history of industrialism. These are the years, I um, can't quite see that, 18, well, the, the 19th century and then 1998. And you can see the green is the way the world used to be. And people, someone talked earlier about <clears throat> we did have equity at one point in time, but we don't have it anymore. We really have two worlds, the, the rich industrial world and the poor so-called developing world. And I think this is the issue that is, is underlying all our wars, all the, uh, the political machinations, that we're still living in a world that says, the more I can get, the better off it is. It's the, the, the basic capitalistic uh, model. If you look at the lower left, this is a little more recent, showing the change in world income distribution. And these numbers are astounding. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer much faster in this decade than they have in the past. And this, I think, is going to lead, when we reach that point and the, and the fossil fuels start declining and the rich world takes more and more food crops to put into uh, driving our cars, the poor world is already starting to face starvation. And that's going to be the basis for uh, a conflict that's unimaginable. And, and I also wanted to say that I think these issues, these talks about ethics and religion and other things were very, very appropriate. I really want to compliment Aaron for, for bringing that up because this is a moral issue. It's not a technical one. Now, being Americans, we really don't believe that because probably our number one religion is technology. No matter what your race or creed, you really believe that uh, this is going to be very useful to us. And in a way, this, this little joke of don't worry, the technology will save us is underlying a lot of what we think and it's underlying a lot of our presentations uh, that we'll hear that are focused on technology aspects. Um, we had 10,000 years of agrarian living and about 250 years of sort of a medium technology living. And now we've had a hyper technology living. There's a, always a popular phrase that you'll hear that uh, we've consumed 90% of all the world's resources, or the fossil fuel resources, in one lifetime. And I think that's what has happened, uh, particularly since the end of World War II, is that when, is when we began this movement. It's now uh, ending up in disaster. Our technology is limited, and by the way, I should say I'm a, I'm a technologist. I was in computer systems and energy systems uh, uh, for several decades and the one thing I've been able to figure out how to do is how do you measure technology and what its actual contribution is and what is its cost and the cost of all our technologies is the generation of immense amounts of CO2. Our fuel cell car is about 30 years late uh, that was the uh, poster child for about three decades we put 17 billion dollars into that we have about a hundred of them running a fusion, I have 40 years late, I think someone pointed out it's really been 25 years away for 50 years, but that's another uh, concept that uh, keeps us going. Biofuels have been a disaster. This is in the last six years we put all this money, passed all these laws for biofuels and we saw yesterday pictures of what the result of that is where the Amazon is now being plowed under even faster in order to provide fuels. Uh, the electric car, which is 90 years old, is now having a comeback uh, in terms of, of what we're, we're pushing. Um, we, we, did ha we have a movie going around, Who Killed the Electric Car?, which is pointing out that that technology is there and ready to go. And I don't believe that at all, and I want to talk a little bit about it because I want to disabuse you of any idea that there's a technological solution that's right around the corner. <clears throat> 